let's see here. Okay, so thanks for sharing the screen, Lucina. Um, welcome to the new time for the CNCSC Hour Group. Um, we're going to be meeting at this time for the foreseeable future. The meeting notes um, are in the then post the chat. Add your agenda items there, and we also have a slide deck that's attached, <clears throat> so you can put anything in the slides. Update those. Let's see. I think we adjusted the order here. So once y'all get the slides open, um, take a look at that. Some of the groups have been doing agenda bashing. So if anyone has, um, which seems like a good idea, if anyone has any items to add right now or talk about that are not listed. I think my items got pushed down because I'm pretty sure I added some of those earlier. That's okay though. If it needs to get punted, it's fine. I think I uh, I keep getting confused because of Frederick from Red Hat. His name really throws me off. Here's or the way it abbreviates it. Okay. Yes. No uh, sorry Here's about that. Frederick will be giving a presentation on the Kubernetes Ansible provisioner and wanted to allow plenty of time for Frederick, Ed from Packet, and Dustin from Oracle to give their updates. And then we would jump into cross cloud after that as it could extend into a big Q&A session. And I wanted to make sure we had enough time for our yeah. guest speakers as well. That, I mean, that's why I initially approached you as making it a, a breakout separate meeting and you asked me to put it here. So I just wanted to make sure that there was time for it since that's where you asked to go over it in this call. I believe there's time. Yes, no worries. Thank you. Yeah, if you could um, move me after the person from Oracle, that would be uh, right, uh, useful for me. Thank you. Is that Frederick? Uh, yes, uh, that's correct. Sounds good. Hey, Frederick. Great. Thanks, everyone, for voting on the start time for today's working group. We'll give this uh, time a try, 11 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Central time. And thanks, Ed, for uh, cross-posting and posting with all the fun emojis on Twitter. I appreciate it. Thanks, Lucina. I'm doing a master class in emoji at some point. <laughs> Super fun. Awesome. All right. If there were no new items to add to the agenda, and if there are, please feel free to do so. I'd love to jump right in with a packet update if you're available. Um, Ed, to begin. Yep. Thanks, Lucina. Hi, everyone. Um, this is a very brief update, but I just want to let people know uh, by way of a small amount of background, Packet is the bare metal hosting provider that I work at that also provides infrastructure for the CNCFCI cross cloud effort. Um, we are aware that the cluster API has some uh, infrastructure that's specific to various clouds. And if you go to that issue, uh, which you're going to right now, I'm looking into the uh, work necessary uh, and the desire, I guess there's two parts of this, is is it a good idea and how hard would it be to uh, implement the uh, cluster API for Packet. Um, coincidentally, there was just a announcement today as part of Google Next of a new Google Cloud, no, a new Go Cloud interface that will, I believe, try to unify cloud provisioning from within Go. And just started to look at that, and I think I have someone from our from the packet community interested in that. 
So um, I hope to report back on that next week or actually probably uh, next month, uh, I have some uh, PTO coming up. And other than that, um, that's what I have. Back to you. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be sure to join the Cluster API breakout meeting tomorrow um, in case they review this issue 431 there as well. And then going to this, uh, unfortunately, Dustin um, is not able to join the call today. So I'll give just a quick update. The Oracle OCI cloud has been um, in progress on the CI status dashboard on cncf.ci. And it looks like, as of yesterday, they were able to get the full run of the provision script completed end of last week and looking for the next steps. And so the next steps is we will take a look at the new pull request and compare it to our master branch do some testing on our CI development branch, and then I'll go from there. If we encounter any issues, let Dustin and team know and create new tickets so that we can get the OCI Oracle Cloud up on cncf.ci. And there is a pull request uh, number 166 for the OCI. Great, so it was about an hour ago, so we'll take a look at that later on today. And in the chat, there was a question, thank you, about the Google, the Go Cloud URL. So thank you for that, Ed. I'll go ahead and add it to the slides for future reference. Okay, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Frederick with uh, Ansible Provisioner. Would you like to share your screen? Or would you like me to go to uh, a link? Uh, yeah, I don't have a, I was gonna work on a presentation earlier today, but my 30 minute meeting turned into a 90 minute meeting. So I wasn't able to put together some slides. Uh, so I apologize about that. But um, yeah, so basically what I what I have, so there, there are two things that came up. One of them is I've been working with uh, the Network Service Mesh Group in order to, uh, uh, in in order to try to build up some of the infrastructure to run and test against a Kubernetes cluster, and I've also been working uh, with the Open Daylight community for some similar purposes, where we're building out Kubernetes support uh, with to allow it to interoperate with uh, with Open Daylight, and. So effectively, in the, in, open, in the Open Daylight community, we then created an a, a Ansible uh, playbook, and what it's designed to do is it's designed to deploy Kubernetes onto an arbitrary system. Could be off. Uh, could be off on premise somewhere, or or cloud, or so on, and it spins up a vanilla Kubernetes using. Uh, Cube admin, and um, and uh, is effectively gets you a running cluster, and so the question, so the the question that I have as well is uh, number one, uh, do you have anything that performs a similar functionality within the uh, within this particular group? Because one option is if there's duplicate functionality, then we could migrate off of that onto uh, something that uh, your team is working on and provides. Or if there's no overlap in the functionality, would it be useful to, uh, to uh, collaborate or uh, work or find a way to to provide this functionality, so that if someone comes up with a similar use case, then they can uh, then they can 
make use of it uh, rather than roll their own. So, th so those are the the two questions that I uh, that I really have. And the uh, the Kubernetes, Thanks, yeah, and the, and the playbook's pretty simple. You just specify the nodes you want to run it on and what version of Kubernetes you want, and then it basically it uses Ansible to deploy onto those systems. So it's it's very it's it's a very simple notebook. I'll pass your questions over to uh, Taylor, Denver, Watson. Everyone else on the call? Uh, sure. Um, before we uh, respond to this, I wanted to know, is there a, a link you can give or tell me where to go for looking at that playbook? Sure, I'll pull it up um, and I'll, I'll post it right now. And I think it's already, I think I had added it to the agenda, but I'll, I'll add it right now. Okay, maybe it is, I'll go look there. Not seeing it in the agenda. Yeah, I'll pull up the uh, the link right now, and I'll put it in the chat. Then I will add this to the agenda as a note under the Go Cloud. I just did a quick look. It's just another middleware library that's entry. All of the providers are entry, so uh, strike one for accessing common features across the clouds, not even deploying them. So I, I don't know what the mileage is going to be here, but that's the high level overview, I would think. Yeah, hey, I've uh, posted a, uh, a link. Yeah, and I don't need an answer right now either. Like, um, if someone follows up with me, then I can, we can work with that, so. Um, I think it may, we may want to have a follow-up on, on this for sure. I'm looking through the, the playbook right now. Um, I definitely think from the, Linux Foundation IT side, where they have a lot of different playbooks, this would be a good thing to contribute. Um, I know we had talked about that, or seen a little bit about that, um, separate from this call. Um, I'm not sure what all they have. Um, I know that some of their installs are a lot more complicated and deal with a lot of other things, so I think it would be nice community-wise for anyone using Ansible to have this. Yeah, uh, that's they gave, probably the first thing I'd say. They gave me um, commit access to the LFIT project in order to start pushing these type of things up. But uh, yeah, I wanted to check this with this particular group first to see, first to make sure we don't duplicate effort because I can easily point them to say, let's use this for this particular notebook. But uh, yeah, I think the LFIT is a, is a great place for this to land because there certainly are multiple other groups who would be good to to work with to to use this. So um, agreed for sure. One of your questions: Do we have a similar tool as far as the functionality um, within? I guess all of CNCF um, for CI. There's a lot of different things happening on the. CNCF CI dashboard, we go about uh, building the clusters a little bit different. Um, and it's using, like, to real quick, would be Terraform and then Cloud in it. And uh, for bootstrapping, we lay down everything. I don't want to go through the whole uh, spill right now. We actually have some slides and demos if you're interested in that. And we can have an offline call. Um, we do have some similar things. It seems like 
the tool though, what you're doing could serve other purposes than what's happening there. So I don't want to say right off the bat that it's duplicating work. Uh, there's a lot of folks that are using Ansible for managing um, various parts of their infrastructure. So I think it's for sure useful to have it. We don't happen to use Ansible um, for the dashboard. Um, and as far as like collaboration on it, I think the first part is probably the LFIT. And I don't know where it would land as far as this project, but there's a lot of different um, projects, I think, within CNCF, so not just the one LFIT, but within CNCF that could use something possibly that does Ansible and they're already interested in using other playbooks to manage the infrastructure, whether it's um, CI, CD, whatever there. I don't have a specific ones that I could point out. Maybe if anyone else that's here right now um, might know of some other projects that could specifically use it. I'm interested in it. Just don't have a specific place I can think of right now. I uh, no, no worries. Uh, yeah, I think LFIT is definitely definitely the right place then to to start. You know, if we, if we land it there, then groups who want to use it for a specific reason can can pull it from the Ansible um, from I think it was, uh, Galaxy is what it's called. So, and right. it would make the deployment uh, deployment quite uh, uh, trivial at that point. Sounds good. Yeah, well, I don't have any other questions, and so, yeah, let's uh, let's follow up afterwards. Um, okay. Thanks. Thanks. We could. Um, we have the link for this. We can share uh, some information on how the cross cloud CI project does deployments and, and provisioning everything for Kubernetes. And that way you could take a look at that and think about um, comparison. Again, I don't, I don't really think it's going to be a replacement. They seem complementary for different purposes. Yeah, and, and for network service mesh, like if I can see what that is and then that, then that'll give me a good um, overview as to like which direction I should head off into in order to to in order to make this happen. Because I prefer to I prefer to work in with what the community is doing rather than like I could I, I could roll my own roll without too many issues. But if the community already is, is already adopting something for this role, then there's no reason to deviate. Sounds good. Thanks, Frederick. Sure, my pleasure. Thank you, Frederick. Uh, sir, are you ready to talk about some of the updates made on CrossCloud CI, and then we can jump into the questions? Yes. So I think um, you went over a couple of related ones, the Oracle stuff. Um, Oracle being is in progress, and um, I don't know if we mentioned last time, but the more vSphere. Um, anyway, so I'll, let me go back. Where were we? I see your window now. So the VMware integration, that's done. We've had a lot of uh, pull requests and updates trying to fine tune some of the differences there. So I appreciate that, Andrew, especially uh, trying to make some of those general purpose, uh, like skipping deprovisioning so that if we want to debug or keep something for whatever reason up a little bit longer, m making those more general purpose. Appreciate that. Um, the Oracle Cloud integration is in progress, as we talked about earlier. 
um, keeping up with updates on all the different projects, including some changes that require um, internal changes to make it a little bit more general purpose to handle updates between versions of Kubernetes or whatever else. Um, Denver just fixed an item on, on IBM Cloud with uh, deprovisioning where they've had some upstream changes that required uh, changes on our end, um, handling how we do Terraform templates and the, how the resources were managed. So that fixed that issue. Since you're talking and, about bugs, mm -hmm. can, can I raise one I don't see here, but I see all the time. And I'm wondering if it's something you're aware of. The, I mean, I know you're aware of it. I just don't know if it's an actual bug. I, a lot of times I yeah, see- Yeah, do you mind? Oh yeah, I can wait. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, or we could just post it. Um, do you want to post it in here and add or go, go ahead, I guess. I mean, where do you want me if, to post it? Is it an existing bug that we don't have listed? I, I don't know. To see if, I don't know if it's an okay. existing bug. Go ahead then. That I've seen lately. You can tell me if it is. The uh, it looks like environment fi environment files are truncated and that fails builds. I just wondered if that's something that's known and that's being worked on. Have y'all seen that a bunch? Um, like a, a if you'll post, a, you could post a, a link. I'll post an issue. Yeah. Yeah, I Slack or it, it may be, I don't know for sure what you're talking about, but there's um, one of those errors that is related to what's actually like four or fours for the artifacts. If they're, for whatever reason, we can't retrieve those. Well, sometimes that, that environment, what you're talking about, it will look like it's truncated or something else is going on. And okay. we're trying to expose more of those. So happy for you to raise an issue and post yeah, that. Yeah, I'll file something. So it, especially if you have specific details on it. So we're trying to differentiate those and then and make the underlying issue more visible so that we don't have that pop thing that's not the real problem. Gotcha. And it's probably that then. So yeah, I'll, I'll file something with some links. I think we'll probably talk about a few of these things with what we would have done later and uh, I think uh, some questions that you had. Okay, thanks for, um, yeah, if you'll post a ticket on that. So slide 13. If we can go on. Um, we've been attending a lot of the different groups trying to figure out how we can collaborate um, related to what Frederick was talking about as far as reusing tools and trying to work directly with the different teams. So Cluster API Breakout, um, the Cluster Lifecycle Group, uh, the NSM um, with you, Frederick, and looking at how we can extend or reuse different components. So doing a lot of that, um, Watson has been working a lot on mind mapping and figuring out what all the different uh, groups are needing. So we'll be providing more details on stuff like that in our kind of roadmap and planning and what we're seeing between the different teams will be upcoming. So slide 14, here's some initial thoughts on what we're seeing. Um, before we get into maybe more um, more items that could be project specific. So we're looking at splitting the screens out um, and having the project, project overview screen and the dashboard. We've talked about that for a while. That still seems like a valuable thing so that we have a difference between the Kubernetes uh, deployment and how that's provisioned and how the projects and end test. Um, Sonaboy, um, be working to update and replace what we had originally set up with cube test and then um, adding cube ADM and potentially ignition support. Andrew, you had brought that up as, as on as far as what's supported in core OS. So that's something that we'll be examining further, whether it's going to be running side by side or if, 
we can replace or what we want to do there. Harbor is something we're looking at to make us not as dependent on GitLab. So we ha could have different components. And at a minimum, if we have a layer, so we could say we can use images and artifacts that are somewhere outside of GitLab, then that would be nice. Um, we have seen issues like possibly the one that you're talking about, Andrew, with um, this environment, uh, the environment being truncated, if, if that is, where you're getting four or fours and it's actually just GitLab image repository not keeping up with request. So using something that's more of a dedicated repository might be a good idea that's focused on that. So um, those are some of the thoughts, uh, what we're looking at maybe sooner on slide 15. Um, automating the project release updates, um, a lot of that tied in with uh, the fact that we're running at 3 a.m., so if automation happens, how soon do we find problems in going through the environment? So there's some issues there, but I think that's desired, so they they come up a little bit sooner. That could be tied in with, um, we do support on-commit runs, and we may decide to do some things with flags um, from different projects. That's been desired to turn on um, when to do full runs of the CI test. So anything along the automating those new updates from the upstream projects. And then the API, I think there's still a, a, a big desire that we've been hearing to have access to all the data. So historical builds, where artifacts are, are come from. So did we pull these down from upstream? Uh, when did the build happen? All the metadata and status that may not be shown in the dashboard. Um, it's stuff that people find useful. So access to those things, to the API, I think is something that we'll want to provide with whatever changes we're going to do um, to the dashboard itself. And then a rollback to previous working releases. This ties into something folks have talked about quite a bit. So if if we have a failed um, deployment or build, maybe the end-to-end the -end test or not, um, they're failing, so we want to actually show on the dashboard and in the API, here was the last uh, release that, that built or deployed successfully and the end-to-end -end tests were successful for. So providing that sort of details, I think, is important. That will help with false positive so we're not showing red on the dashboard. If if we have this, we can say, here was the last one um, that worked and the current one failed, but you can see uh, the last one that you could use. Now I talked about the new screens. Um, on the slide 16, some of the groups that were attending and events that were gonna be a part of. If anyone's interested, then please join. If you're in Austin, um, a fun thing that started where there's a lot of good conversation, the open source access. And I think that's it. We don't have a Q&A section here. I think we'll have that as part of the next. Um, so Andrew, I'll hand this over to you to kind of start if you wanna give, I think you yeah. have some thoughts on where this is going. Well, thank you. Thank you for that, Taylor, and I appreciate the, the slides, and I'll try to be better about not interjecting in the middle there. Uh, I guess I just, uh, I'm used to that. I'll, I'll file, file those issues. Um, yeah, no so I had, no, thanks. I had reached out to Lucina you know, a while back with some questions for the team at Vault regarding the cross-cloud dashboard, and uh, she suggested this would be a good venue for it so other people could benefit from the, the conversation. Essentially, VMware is getting more interested or involved in, in Kubernetes end-to-end -end testing as well. Uh, include, you know, that's the test infra project, Prowl and, and test grid and whatnot. And one of the things that, you know, I, I, I raised, a topic I raised with my colleagues is, hey, you know, Volk had to deal with getting involved in Kubernetes end-to-end -end or conformance testing, not in the exact same way, but it, conformance testing nonetheless. So. I was just kind of curious for myself, for VMware, for 
I'm sure other companies would also, or organizations would also benefit from, from your answers. But essentially, I, I, I'm curious, like when you were approached or you approached uh, the CNCF, like what were the goals of the dashboard? And I think uh, we, you reached out to me on Slack and asked me to clarify use cases. And so what I meant by use cases was, or was, did they come to you and say, this is exactly what we want? Or did they come to you and say, we need to provide us, you need to provide a solution that there are these three use cases we want to solve. And this was your solution for that. Uh, it, additionally, if you could have done it all over again, how would you approach it? You know, what feedback did the CNCF provide in that process? And finally, you know, what are the plans that you could possibly expand the dashboard to cover into testing? And I, I say that having just exited a conversation in SIG testing where, you know, they into end testing, at least a subset of that are conformance tests. And I would, you know, I think you would say this as well, that the dashboard isn't on a lot of ways. It's conformance testing. I think you've called it that. So is there an opportunity for the dashboard to contribute back to the test grid? And if so, have you, have you considered that? I just, I'm trying to one, learn from your process, uh, learn from any mistakes you made or what you would do different, and also not try to duplicate any future work that you could share in VMware's own efforts to, um, you know, expand into the, uh, the Kubernetes testing. So hope, hopefully that was all clear as mud. Thanks for that um, intro. Um, it, you provided a little bit more info for myself as well, so thanks. Um, I think we can kind of go through this. Uh, we've laid out most of kind of responses, but I think there, there's probably some conversations around this based on what you're just saying. And it looks like we have quite a few folks on the call that could respond to maybe some additional pieces. Um, well, so and when I, about what, the goals, what are we on? Go ahead. Yep. About the goals and use cases. I mean, that was more for a, hey, I'm managing a similar project at the moment. I'm just being selfish. You're very smart people who did this and figured it out. And <laughs> I want you to do my work. No, I'm, I'm, I want to learn, you know, what things that you encountered and, and you know, how you responded to them. I'm being selfish and hopefully that uh, myself and again, others getting involved in, in Kubernetes testing can, can learn from you, your experience. Absolutely. And I um, would love for that to happen where more folks are utilizing uh, at least different parts of the components and, and we can share back and forth. <laughs> so let's see. This is kind of an overview and thanks Lucina for adding um, some of this in here. Um, may have uh, HH talk a little bit here. He's on the call in Denver as well, of course. So originally um, after, so give some way back background, uh, HH and I have worked with Bob Wise in the past. And so just based on some familiarity with some larger projects and helping with CI, there was uh, some need around trying to do CI CD testing with with Kubernetes and over a couple of years it seemed like different conversations helped to move that forward and eventually came back with a request that uh, went primarily to HH on trying to build out something that we could demonstrate uh, start as a demonstration and I don't know, HH, do you have some, like anything to add to this? I mean, I know that just this first part was when you got started with Denver and, and got stuff kicked off. I mean, we have some other specific things that we can go into, but anything kind of on the background there? Um, Andrew, there's something specific I can speak to in that other than we, it was an undefined, we need to uh, demonstrate um, are the interactions of all of, of the CNCF projects as a whole. 
Yeah, um, and I guess I was focusing more on the 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 conformance testing aspect with respect okay. to right. the, the yep. Kubernetes. So okay. that's a, a longer journey. I'll go ahead. I think Taylor's doing a great job of covering the beginning of things, and as it gets through uh, later, I'll, I'll pick up. Right, and, and let, let me cool. let me uh, quickly say, like I. It's been difficult to get as much conversation out of SIG testing with some respects to, uh, because there haven't been as lot of people, as many people that have implemented things that work with Prowl externally. So because yeah. you kind of did a similar thing with multiple platforms, I'm looking for up, uh, examples of how you went about organizing uh, that um, to do a similar sure. project in internally. So, you know, I can I approach this privately. I didn't want to take up time here, but maybe, like you said, it's useful yeah. for others. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good, I think it's a good story for everybody, actually. Um, and go ahead, Taylor. Oh, uh, um, I wouldn't say anything. Okay. Uh, I'll just quickly speak to the, the choices that we made in trying to look at what was in the community. Um, SIG testing didn't, it was only one cloud at the time. Um, and we were looking to find something more generic. There were not a lot of tools out there that did um, uh, multiple providers uh, well. Um, there was everybody was there was a, there was a very uh, busy field. Everybody's trying to do the same thing, and so um, we did make some uh, some early choices to try to to generalize things to make sure it wasn't specific to a provider. Um, one of those things was trying to find an API. Uh, to all of the clouds, we did go with uh, Terraform on that, and also trying to find an OS agnostic approach um, that didn't require uh, that was well suited to CI. So we instead of trying to SSH or use any any um, after the boxes up provisioning tools, uh, we decided to go with um, Cloud Init, and uh, using the very simple put some files here and when you know System D and stuff starts up again. Uh, some of the more advanced stuff. Um, those design decisions have, have stuck pretty well. Uh, one of the things that um, uh, we also looked for was some type of CI platform that was uh, put together enough where we didn't have to do all the glue at once. So we made some early decisions to go ahead and use um, GitLab for that. I really liked the approach of being able to use something open source and drop in a single file um, to get us started. and. Uh, and I think that pretty much covers the design decisions then. And as we worked more and more uh, with um, Test Infra, um, trying to find ways to reuse that, that, that approach. And it's, there's, I mean, you've been involved in the conversations on, in several places where it seems, particularly for CI and within Test Infra, um, the, the flow is uh, focusing on, it was Kubernetes Anywhere for a while, and now that we're seeing um, API, uh, cluster API is beginning to come to fruition. Uh, it looks like a cluster API run by cube test, run by um, EDE, uh, is, is the long-term broader uh, Kubernetes-specific community flow. Um, and I, I'm myself, as I, and I let, let everybody else speak, um, but I'm, I am, leaning more and more towards that. And I, I would suggest that we, we seriously explore um, you reusing all of the CNCF cross cloud CI um, provisioning and um, add that uh, cube ADM support, but reuse all of the existing infra behind something um, that like cluster API and kube test and ED so that there's a simple way that um, we're we do have this CI focus thing that the whole community is using, leveraging uh, all of the prior work uh, for. But there may have been more of an explanation, but anyway, that's uh, that's my. No, that was great. <laughs> that, that, that was great. I, I had the same conversation about cluster API the other day. We're doing a similar design choice. Where we're using a Docker image that can be part of a pod spec for testing, and that image yeah. will be in charge of deploying a vSphere cluster and Kubernetes. And guess what? We're using Terraform. And basically, we've copied yeah. your stuff twice. <laughs> and eventually, it might end up being a cluster API thing. And then I said, like, yeah. three is Prowl leverages cluster API directly, potentially. Yeah. But no. yeah, I mean, I've copied your stuff twice now uh, and have, have it working. And, and you know, it's yeah. we have. And it works really well. So thank you. Yay. Um, 
Yeah, I'd, I would I would throw that up to the the community or see if we can't um, allocate some uh, some resources to go ahead and 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 uh, following your your lead. Uh, and uh, you are using Cube Admin, um, right? Within your the the changes you've made, or uh, so far it's just about deploying the vSphere. No, no, no. So no. Okay. Um, well, it's. It's. I. I think I'll let. I'll let Volk speak to that. The. The specifics of it. But I. I. I don't think it's a. It'll be an undertaking, mind you. But I don't. I. I think the value that we get out of it would be. That'd be tremendous. That benefit the whole community. Particularly for all the providers we already have running. Sorry that you had to do the hard. The. The heavy lifting for the first <laughs> foray into, to cluster API. Thank you for that. Yeah, I think they underestimate. The cool. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. So, um, yeah. So I, th I think one of the big things is there's a lot of different groups trying to solve overlapping problems. One thing that I think is important is to know that there's n there's not going to be one tool that's going to solve all of the problems for everyone. There's different end users and use cases. Um, ideally, we're going to have different components that can be reused between them, and we'll be able to compose those for um, your own needs, which are going to be different from someone else's needs. Um, let's see. I think we could probably we kind of talked about all of this a little bit. Yes. Let's run through and see if there's anything else specific though answering your question. So we go back to that first slide 18, just a quick review based on that. So what were the project goals, um, identified use cases, what we would have done differently, and um, feedback and more ED I test. I think the done differently is one of the more interesting ones to me. Because I, like, when I have sure. like, a huge projects, I always think, oh, I could have done this, that, and the other. Absolutely. I, I agree. Um, it was always something with hindsight you would have done uh, differently and made it uh, more useful. Let's hop to slide 20 um, real quick. So this is just a quick overview. The goals, so tied in with um, why we were here and at a higher level, what HH was just talking about, and uh, the CI platform, so that's tied in with the uh, building building that initial platform out and what it could do and the different pieces within that for provisioning Kubernetes using Terraform and cloud in it um, to be able to handle a larger set. Uh, at the time, KubeADM was not really in a place where it was going to solve uh, the needs for HA clusters and, and handling um, bringing up all of these nodes with with uh, various uh, needs. So those were kind of the, the reasons why that was ch chosen first, and that's done. And then um, a status repository for storing all that information, which would be used by the dashboard, so how to display this. So that was one of the biggest main goals, was whatever CI system underneath, we need to be able to have a high-level um, dashboard. So that's what we have now. Um, it, it had happened to have many statuses that maybe we can get to in the past while, what we would have done differently. It's displaying a lot of things, uh, but it is that high level. And then integrations with external systems, which was in our mind early on, but it didn't really happen until we were able to integrate with um, ONAP because they had their own CI systems. Um, and we were able to use their artifacts and start working with them. So the use cases, we did put a few in here kind of as response. I don't know if you responded in Slack. I didn't see it, Andrew, but um, we didn't actually write them up as say traditional use cases where we fully identify user, but you could create those. So that first vanilla Kubernetes working across uh, different cloud providers, that ties in with what HH was saying as far as um, test grid, and what cloud provider, what's being done now, um, how, how you can do this across multiple providers. So that was a use case. Uh, 
Um, and I won't talk about implementation where you, there are a lot of tools at the time that could do a few, none were doing all of them. So sure. that one was a solid use case to get going at the time. And, and then from the side of like an end user, there's a lot of folks that were afraid of vendor lock-ins and okay, Kubernetes can solve this, but how, how does it, how does it actually work? So this is kind of a, the idea of, more than a demo, something that's live and running and doing testing from an end user perspective. Oh, Kubernetes actually can be deployed and you can deploy the apps across all of those and we can see it working, see it's valid. You're running the tests for those applications. So that vendor lock-in, it's related to the first one. It's more specific of, say, if you're looking at use case, that actual end user over there. Um, the cloud native apps is interoperability between them when they're running on Kubernetes. So maybe Prometheus and metrics for um, a, another project, Core DNS or different things, whatever you wanna show. But the interoperability between those and how that would work specifically utilizing functions on in Kubernetes. Maybe that's just the networking and the ease of use or it could be specific components. That goal is something that's there, that use case I should say. It's a harder one to reach. That's kind of a reference architecture type thing. Um, and it's better to have scenarios. That's something that that we've kept in mind, though, as we're building that out. And then the the build, all the status, E to E build, everything else. So the use case, how do we look from that high level status sure. and actually see how these different pieces, specifically for CNCF projects, which was what we were giving. How do we see how they all work at a quick glance versus going to every project? Yeah, I, I feel so bad that you went mm -hmm. through all this effort to lay all this out for those questions. At the same time, you know, I, I, it makes me feel worse that you just, your team isn't somehow involved in the leadership of the cluster API because everything you've described so far is just like the perfect project plan for the cluster API and its goal or its goals in my mind should be and then you already have a solution it's uh anyway yeah <laughs> well we're actively working with them and HH is working um also on a on a project that's um related to kind of it's it's a tool that helps CI I don't know if you've looked at the API SNU project but it's all of these are kind of related to how do we help these groups so in a lot of ways this in addition to providing some of the goals that we had with the dashboard um, it's it's trying to give miss uh, fill some of those missing gaps between all the projects where things overlap but they don't quite meet and then we are participating in a lot of the the group calls and everything and seeing how do we oh, sure. provide feedback. Some of these things were way ahead. So KubeADM wasn't ready to be used. So now there's it's kind of at a stage where we can start collaborating. Test grid and what type of the API coverage from API Snoop may not have been the right time early. It's now at a right time where they're trying to meet a goal with conformance, the conformance group. Now they have more providers that are interested. So it's kind of coming together. Uh, but I appreciate your comments on that. Um, so let's, let's move on to what you were saying it might be exciting here. So what would we do differently? So um, broke some of these out and Denver, I don't know if you have good audio, if you have some thoughts or um, anyone else that wants to speak up, feel free. So modifying how we're building and using the artifacts, that would be a big one. And the one of the things that was desired and we didn't really get to get to until say ONAP was using the external artifacts and really thinking about those and reusing and saving them. That's something that you would want to do once it's validated. If a, if a project already has artifacts and they're producing them in a way that they're easily accessible and we can validate maybe the they have CI tests that we don't need to run them, then using some of those, um, there's 
there's a bit of complexity around determining and is this something for each project if there's not a format, but that's something that we're moving towards. And I think that would be, uh, there'd be some more that we'd put in place and that would have more collaboration with the community early on and reusing those verified artifacts. So um, besides that, the showing them, maybe the API. So I'll move on how, to, how um, on the provisioning side of Kubernetes. So this ties in, uh, we talked about KubeADM a bit. So Terraform with Packer to create pre-baked images. So this would be beneficial in a lot of ways. It would speed up uh, the deployments of Kubernetes if we've already validated run conformance tests and everything. And we have images for all the cloud providers. We could spin those up when we're running additional tests for say the apps. Um, or, or whatever parts that we need. So this is about using those validated verified artifacts. Those could also be made available to the community. And we say, hey, we ran these, here's the test. We, we've we also pulled data from other places. KubeADM, specifically for the bootstrapping of Kubernetes. So this might be what we'd look at right now would be in the cloud init phase where we lay down the manifest. Use KubeADM in that part after Terraform. Yeah, this is the part that interests me most because this is the piece of the project in which I'm currently working or the Terraform stuff in which I'm currently working. I'm just to the point of laying down Kubernetes and to see you say that you would use KubeADM at this point is very interesting to me. It doesn't it doesn't totally uh, divorce you from something like cloud init or ignition because there's using that to configure the actual guest OS outside of Kubernetes. But it makes me think if I shouldn't consider KubeADM instead of basically just copying your stuff. I'll, I'll talk to you, maybe I'll bring that up with you offline or something. Absolutely, I, I th this is still in the um, investigating stage for our, what I should say, what the CNCF-CI dashboard is doing. Like, is it ready? Do we have the different pieces? Maybe it is, you know, called by cloud in it, but we're not actually laying down the manifest, we get it going, or maybe there's some preliminary stuff. So there's some stuff to look at right there. I think what we have right now, if it's useful, then use that. It's it's still valid. And hopefully, whatever you have, it would be compatible if we move over and you'd say, here's how to migrate towards that. Uh, it's That's definitely true. not something you're going to see real soon. And the rest of the pieces we're going to try to make, um, I don't want to say backwards compatible, but a migration path. So. Uh, let, let's go on to slide 23, just got a couple minutes. The GitLab implementation. So um, we, I'd, this is something talking about earlier, we um, use GitLab as the, uh, the main CI platform. We probably look at trying to keep something separate and not have it so dependent on the GitLab pieces from the start. There's definitely some parts where it could have been separated a little bit more even if we didn't say it was completely independent. Um, it's definitely good to get started and there's some really useful information, but um, maybe a specific thing though would be these webhooks. So their API is not re really reliable. You can return different information from what you see in the database or the web UI. So there's also some benefits from using the webhooks for the events, but having more of that knowledge ahead of time, which is hard to know, but it's, you know, if we had it, then that would have been something to do um, once we've really got to know GitLab. The status repository. So long-term goals for integration working with the community were there, but the, to actually plan it out and build and have enough time, which we didn't, um, to talk with the community, uh, to look at what that could be would have um, been nice, would have affected some of the collaboration, metadata, and everything else. Uh, potentially allow other folks to add, here's an integration to our CI system, and we're using the this community format that we all agree to. Some of that's happening in OpenCI, and uh, Watson's been working on white papers and stuff and collaborating, so I think we'll see that. That would be an, an early thing. So, yeah, and test grid and all the different systems we're in, interested in. So let's see, directions, feedback, we're kind of at the hour. And yeah, you can read some of this. Group. Yeah. Um, it, there's a couple more slides if y'all want to read the answer, like 
where we got some directions, a collaboration, and then plans to cover uh, Kubernetes EDE testing. We do existing. We are going to keep working with different groups like Kubernetes feature flags and work with some on the, the conformance specifically. So where are we? Slide 33. So how to connect with us if y'all want to continue the conversation. And um, Lucina, you want to close out? You want me to continue. Thanks everyone for your time and participation. We hope to see you again next month. The next working group call will be on Tuesday, August 28th. Um, some action items that we have will follow up with Frederick on the Ansible Kubernetes install. We've got the Oracle Cloud pull request. We're working on a Linkerd build issue today. We'll be attending the Open Source Summit in Vancouver at the end of August, um, which is also the CNF workshop is happening on Tuesday the 28th, and that's the same day as the next working group call. Thank you, every, thank you, Lucina, for that. For the and Taylor, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thanks, everyone. Also, you may be Thanks, interested everybody. in the OSS Summit. That's a better place to be than Austin in August. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>